My name is Piers Torday, and this is Ask a Writer. There's one book I think everyone should read, and it's called Welcome to Nowhere by Elizabeth Laird. And it's a wonderful story about Omar, who grows up in Bosra in Syria. And unfortunately, as we all know, uh, war came to Syria. And this is a story about how Omar very bravely and courageously leads his family through refugee camps to Britain. A great way to develop your own voice as a writer is to read writers you admire and enjoy and try copying out an actual extract of their work word for word and then try adding to it and you'll see that your own voice starts to emerge. My number one writing tip is never give up. If you have a story to say, keep writing until the story is just how you want it. It's never your ideas that are the problem, it's that you haven't quite yet found the right way to express them. I wish I knew before I started writing that writing books takes as long as it does. It's not a problem, but it does take a long time and you have to be patient. I wish I knew that I should always enjoy the process of writing more than the pleasure of holding a book in your hand, exciting though that is. And thirdly, uh, I wish I knew that writing wasn't just about writing books, but is in fact a wonderful passport to all sorts of other things such as speaking to children such as yourselves in schools, writing plays, writing films. If you write a good story, it can take you anywhere. Yeah. Writer's block is the idea that sometimes there's literally a block in your brain and you can't think of what to write. And in my experience, you have simply run out of ideas when this happens and so you need to refuel on ideas. So what I do is I might go and read a book, I might watch a movie, play a game, take some exercise, take the dog for a walk, uh, just even walk around a room for a bit, anything just to shake your mind up and get some new ideas and then soon you'll find that block disappears. The piece I'm going to share is from a book called The Last Wild and I was inspired to write it by devastating reports of the loss of biodiversity on this planet over the last 40 years. And I began to wonder what would happen if we lost all the animals on the planet? What would we do? And I had another job at the time and I started writing at weekends and evenings. It took me 17 drafts to get it right and four years, but eventually I did and that's the story I'm going to read to you now. The piece I'm about to read to you is from this book, The Last Wild, and it's about this boy, Kester Janes. And Kester Janes lives in a world where a mysterious virus has killed nearly all the animals in the world, causing a worldwide food shortage. And the company that used to make food on their were animals now makes a disgusting fake replacement food called Formula. And they're so powerful for making all this food that they run all the schools as well. And Kester's in one of these schools. And unfortunately, since a terrible thing happened six years ago, Kester has lost the ability to speak to people. But one day, while he's sitting all by himself eating this horrid fake food, he finds a little cockroach on the edge of his bowl. And the cockroach begins, to Kester's amazement, to talk to him. I land with a massive splash in a puddle. There's a display of torch beams going on over my head, but the wardens can't get down. Come on, says one of them, and then I hear their boots running overhead as their lights move away. I'm in total darkness, with hundreds of cockroaches clicking and scratching around me. I start crawling after them. I say crawling, but... Actually, it's more like swimming, the water is so deep. I didn't even know cockroaches could swim, and here they are, paddling alongside me. They don't speak, 
not even to one another, or stop to rest, just keep on pushing forward. The warden's thumping feet have totally faded away now, and all I can hear is my own breath echoing off the wet walls in the occasional scratch from a roach. You see, this tunnel isn't a smooth pipe. It's jagged and uneven, and I keep cutting my hands on the rocks. It might be my imagination, but the further we go, the deeper the water seems to be getting. And as it rises, I can feel the floor of rocks fall away from my feet, and I start to bump and scratch my head as the roof of the tunnel gets closer and closer. I'm working hard just to stay afloat. Slowly and steadily, more and more water, tasting of soil, starts to splash into my mouth as my arms grow tired. Slow down, I call out. I can't keep up. There's no reply, just quiet splashing. Then, very faintly, some distance up ahead, I hear a deep voice like the beat of a drum. It's the general, the cockroach I spoke to in the yard. We must keep going. There's no time to lose. But the ceiling of the tunnel has dropped down right in front of me. Tracing the outline of rock with my hands, I try to search for the narrow layer of air between it and the water that they expect me to swim through. Except there isn't one, because the tunnel from here is completely underwater.